Okay, so how do we document the weight that we use and how many reps we complete? Um, pretty simple. We have a weight column and a repetition column. You got to look at how many reps are recommended for that set. And um, what we're looking for is to just um, hopefully complete them, but at least document if we don't get all the reps. So that'll give us a clue on what to do the next time. So when you come into workout, you're going to put the date in into the date category. Uh, we prefer to put the date, uh, the day of the week as well. So maybe you put M, you know, 3, 10, whatever. If it's uh, Monday, March 10th. I don't know if March 10th is a Monday, but uh, in this world it is. So uh, you put in the date, and hopefully you already know around where you're at for your your weight for this set. If you're not sure, then you just start really light. If you're a beginner, you'll you'll definitely be bumping as we go. But let's say everybody started at something like 75 pounds for workout number one for squat. And maybe your bench is 65 pounds, something light like that. And then it gets to be much more as you go. Back extensions, maybe it's something like a five-pound dumbbell. And for rows, you plan on doing the machine row for 65 pounds as a starting point. All right, so all you do is you plan those weights out. Anytime there's three sets of five, uh, I would prefer to have all of the sets with the same weight. Don't increase the weight on the same day. Just focus on your form that day. If it's pretty light for you, just use that information to, to increase your max for the next time you work out. So we have our weights picked. We know about where we're going to start. And when we go through our workouts, you can go in any order you want, uh, depending on how many people are in the weight room. If, you, if you're on there, in there on your own, sometimes it's good to just do all three sets of squat with a good rest period. Uh, when there's more people and you got to bounce around and you see what's available, you got to bounce around. Um, but be smart with your rest and make sure that whatever muscles you're about to train are well rested. For whatever order we go in, uh, let's say we're doing our first set of squats. We have 75 pounds on the bar and we plan on doing five reps. So we're going to try to do five reps. If we complete it, we would put a check mark. So I'll use the um, hashtag as a, as a check mark. Um, or you can put the number five, it doesn't matter. Whatever lets you know that you completed all the reps. And we put check marks every time we do it. Don't put them in until you complete the set. But let's say you got all your sets done, that's what you would do. Let's say for bench it was the same thing. We planned on doing three sets of 65 for, for five repetitions and we did a great job and we got them all. Um, uh, let's say for back extension, um, we, for some reason, don't get everything. Um, we, we get a little tired at rep eight or our back rounds or a little bit at rep eight. We can put in, we actually achieved eight reps out of 10. Maybe the same problem happens for rows. Maybe a big problem happens for rows. On rows, we, we completed the first set, but then the second set, we got pretty tired. We were only able to do eight there and then seven there. Okay. Um, I'll cover this in the next video, but Clearly for squats and bench, we chose uh, the correct weight that's going to allow us to go up in weight. For rows, we probably picked a weight that was too heavy for us, so we have to go down. And then for back extensions, we may have, um, have to make a decision on, you know, can I handle going slightly up in weight or should I go down? So that's how you fill out those, uh, those columns, and that, that's all you do. You just take that first, um, that first row there, and you're focused on three sets per exercise.